Well, I know I've said twice now that I was going to put this Admiral set away and get back to other projects, but I got to thinking that I've come this far. I might as well just finish restoring the damn thing. So <laughs> I started poking around more. Uh, something else that uh, spurred me to do that is I found a free copy of the Sam's online. Now the reason I wanted the Sam's photo fact is that Sam's gives you a photo of the chassis with the parts locator. This had been worked on by somebody else, so I wasn't sure if all the components are in their right places and, you know, there weren't any modifications because I found some things that looked a little odd, like these two resistors kind of floating in space and similar here. Um, but it turns out that these two resistors are supposed to be connected like that. They just stick up in the air and there's a wire going down over here. And that's, that's how it's supposed to be, so... Uh, anyways, so I started checking resistors. Now one of the problems I had with this set is that I couldn't get the picture to, uh, I think it was to go up all the way. There's a vertical centering control on the back and I cranked it all the way over to one side and the picture still was down a bit low. So I started checking the resistors in the high voltage chain. The electrostatic sets are kind of funky in that uh, you got all these high value resistors in a chain that goes around and there's the centering controls. Now the reason they have all these resistors in series is because of the high voltage potential. Resistors do actually have a voltage rating. Your standard little half watt carbon comp resistor, I think it's like three, maybe four hundred volts. You certainly can't put a five or six thousand volts across, which is what we've got here. We just arc right across the resistor. So you got to put a whole bunch of them in series to distribute the voltage. All right, so here's a vertical centering control. Start checking out all these resistors in the chain. They're okay, and then down in here until I got to this guy, which is kind of charred, nasty looking. It's measuring infinite. It's completely open. That would be uh, that 4.7 mug resistor right there. I'm glad it's not the control, or at least I don't think it's the control, because these are odd, because they have taps on them. See the little dot there and the line coming off? So it's a 2 meg potentiometer, but it's also got a tap at you know, some percentage of the way in. And uh, it'd be tough to find a replacement. So I will replace that resistor, and I'll do some other checking. I also want to clean up a few things. When the guy recapped this originally, he... Uh, just cut the leads off and then kind of did a pigtail to solder them on. I want some of them are a little sloppy, so I want to clean that up. And some of these resistors, or sorry, capacitors, I don't know if these are the originals or if these are just really old replacements, but something like this, that's a pretty old cap. So at least like this guy, this guy, this guy, I want to replace these with new caps. Orange drops, probably all okay, so I think I'll just leave those alone. This is turning out to be a more interesting restoration project than I expected. First up, replacing that 4.7 meg resistor did indeed fix my vertical centering problem. So uh, I got plenty of leeway to go up and down. And remember, this, this isn't supposed to fill the entire screen. It's not a porthole set. This is supposed to be a rectangular image. So actually I got the width a little bit too wide and the height is just about right. All right, so what has made this more interesting and frustrating is that, well, first up, I've noticed that more and more of these orange drop caps are not the correct value. What makes it doubly frustrating is they're often mounted like this, and I can't see the value without having to really contort them. In some cases, I just can't, because there's like, here there's a cap next to it, and there's no way to twist it around. It's so one reason I don't like these. I know they have a great reputation, being very reliable and all, but the leads are not axial, meaning they don't come out of the ends. They don't really fit in here right unless you contort them, bend them over, and then you get the orange insulation starts cracking off. Hard to read the value if you want to double check it. And they're physically kind of big. So, anyways, I've replaced a few of those. Now, here's where it got frustrating. I had been assuming 
that this chassis, which is stamped 17T1, is the same as a 19A1 chassis. Basically, uh, because physically they look the same to me, and two, when I looked in my rider's index, and you look up, Admiral 17T1, it says chassis, same as chassis 19A1. And I know the cabinet for a 17T1 is different, and the knobs are slightly different too. This set came with a 19A11 cabinet. I imagine the original 17T1 cabinet got broken. Somebody popped this chassis into it. Alright, so as I was working on this, I started noticing subtle differences. For example, on here, 10K resistor right there. That's going to that big high voltage cap I replaced earlier. I couldn't find that resistor anywhere in here. I uh, thought, well, uh, I'd use the SAMs, um, not this page in particular, but there's a similar diagram where it shows all the resistors, and it's supposed to be down around in here somewhere. Didn't find it. I actually looked at one of my 19A1 chassis, and yeah, the resistor was down in there. So I was getting all ready to mount it in, and when I got to thinking, well, maybe I should um, do a little more uh, research. So here's the SAM schematic. And I got the rider schematic, and I think they're identical. I think they just copied from each other, or maybe from the original manufacturer. I don't know. But I did have another option, which is a Wallace Tellyade. These generally only have maybe one or two pages per set, but they do have like every chassis that Admiral made in these two years. And they do have a page just on the 17T1. So that sure seemed to indicate to me that they knew that there were some differences since they did a separate section on each one. And when you look down in here, hey, uh, there's that capacitor, and there's no 10K resistor to be found. And then I checked more and more stuff, became more and more apparent that, yeah, there are quite a few subtle differences between the two. Not the least of which is this control. Uh, sorry, not that control, uh, this control up here. That's verti vertical linearity. I don't think the 19A11 or 19A1 chassis even has vertical linearity. At least I haven't been able to find the control on the set, on the schematic rather. So that's that control right there. And if we look back on the SAMs, I'm pretty sure there's no vertical linearity control on there anywhere. Which actually means this is a better design, because that's, that's something nice to have, that lets you correct for uh, any variations in the vertical deflection. So, for instance, when I adjust the control here, you can stretch out the top and squish the bottom, or vice versa. So, I've been going through the set and uh, changing things bit by bit. Uh, what was also added to the fun is that some components, like this guy here, it's a 8.2K resistor that was measuring uh, out of specs. So I replaced it. However, the original, it was connected down here. And that looked to be the original resistor, and that was the original connection point. But in all the schematics, 19A1 and 17T1, they showed it being connected over here. So that may have been a mistake in the factory, or maybe it was a production run change. I'm not sure, but I put it back where the schematic shows it to be. I'm trusting that the schematic is right. I, I don't know. We'll see. Um, well, speaking of resistors, I also found one other that was measuring completely open. This guy, I replaced that, and quite a few more that are out of tolerance, and I still have a few to go. I've basically finished everything from here down, which leaves the top half here to do. But the more changes I've been making, more stuff I've been replacing, the picture's been getting better and better. I know it doesn't look that hot right now because I don't have a very strong signal source hooked up, but uh, it's definitely more stable and uh, it, it seems to me the set's been working better as I've been making all these changes. So hopefully now that I've got the correct schematic and I've got a better handle on uh, the set, it won't take me too much longer. 
And then I want to make a couple modifications. One is to add retrace blanking to get rid of those annoying horizontal lines. And another is to add DC restoration. Now that I know it's possible in not only this set, but also the VT-71. Some clever guy figured out how to do it. And I'll post a link to his uh, webpage explaining what he did. So you guys can check that out too. But in order to make that change, I had to order up a special diode. Should be here by the end of the week. Alright, I'm finally done checking all the resistors, replacing any that were off value, double checking the replaced capacitors and replacing those that were the wrong value, and replacing the few old caps that were still in it. So here's what I took out. Here's what it looks like now. And it's playing fine. So now what I get to do is because I poked and prodded things under down in here in the IF stages is I have to do another alignment. Even if you don't replace any capacitors across IF cans, um, just me, say, moving this component from one side to the other while I was testing a resistor value can throw things off. So I will quickly go through the alignment. It shouldn't take too much. It shouldn't take too long because. Uh, I know, I already aligned it, probably just need some fine tweaking, and then the components that I ordered to do that retrace, suppression, and DC restoration are supposed to arrive tomorrow, so maybe we can finally wrap this setup then. I finished with the alignment, then fired up my Sencor VA62 to make some final adjustments, and I think it's looking pretty darn good. Here it is looking good. And there is the multi burst, which gives you an indication of the bandwidth. We've got pretty distinct lines all the way out to here, which I think means it's a 3 or 3.5. Let's see. Uh, 3. So we've got pretty distinct separation up to. 3 megahertz, which is not bad for what is supposed to be a low-end TV. Alright, so that's going to be it for now, until the parts show up tomorrow for a couple minor modifications I want to make to this set. My parts have arrived right on time, so I can proceed with my modifications. First one I'll do is simpler one, which is a retrace line blanking modification. So those zigzag lines you've seen on the screen on the set, that's from when the electron beam is done drawing from the top to the bottom, and it has to go back up to the top, you get a zigzag. What this does is it picks off a signal, or that vertical signal, puts it through an RC network to make a pulse, and applies that to a control grid on the CRT, which normally is grounded. That pulse, which will be a positive pulse, will blank out the electron beam while it's going from the bottom back up to the top. Need a high voltage cap here because this is a pretty uh, significant voltage here. I don't know if I've got 250 at 1000, but I'm pretty sure I've got 500 picofarad at 500 volt. If I put two of those in series, the capacitance gets halved while the voltage rating gets doubled. So, I should be able to work that out. Now this is a more interesting one. This is uh, DC restoration, and this modification works not only in an Admiral electrostatic set, but also the Motorola VT71 series. So I ordered up a bunch of these specialty diodes that you need for that. Now I'm not going to go into a lengthy explanation of what DC restoration is. I posted a link to the website where I got this from. You can go through and read that for yourself, but Basically, um, after the video detector right here, you've got both a DC and AC component to the video signal, but they use a capacitor to couple it to the, to the video amplifier, which means it blocks DC, you lose your DC component. This circuit will help restore it. It has to do with when you have varying 
black white gray levels on your scene um, how they get interpreted uh, basically this is better <laughs> um, so I'm gonna make that modification see how it works out alright I finished installing both modifications now I've temporarily jumpered over the one to suppress the retrace lines to remind you guys what they look like so here is without the modification and here is with the modification so no more retrace lines now as far as the DC restoration well I think you just have to take my word for it that I have better contrast now with it with a higher brightness level and when scenes change from say dim lighting to bright lighting I don't have to constantly adjust the brightness and contrast to get my to get a decent picture so as far as where I installed them flashlight here alright so one of them is right down in here so here's my two caps I had to put in series because I didn't have a thousand volt cap handy. I'll keep looking around for one and uh, replace that when I do because it's a little f flimsy right now. So this is the wire going to the CRT. This used to be grounded right over here. I disconnected it from ground, spliced in a longer wire, ran it over here, and there's my 220k resistor and my two capacitors and there's where the CRT connects up. Now, as far as the other modification, that goes on down in here. So I added that diode, that resistor, that capacitor, and uh, also this capacitor hiding behind back here. That's the capacitor that actually holds the DC um, level. The, the diode acts as a clamp, and that holds the charge. And uh, then there's also this resistor in series with this capacitor. It ties in all to this node down in here. So that is a DC restoration mod. Now uh, there's just one final thing that bugs me about this set. And perhaps you can hear that. That's the hum. Right now the volume's turned down all the way. And there's the hum. Now I've grounded the input to the audio amp. That's this wire here. Here's the volume control. Here's the pickoff from the center wiper. I can ground all that out. It has no effect on the hum whatsoever. So the hum is not coming through the IF stage. It's not coming through the audio IF. It's not coming through the radio detector. It's somewhere after that capacitor. So somewhere in here. Or perhaps that's just the way it's going to be. I don't know. This is the first one of these sets I've ever worked on. But I find it a bit irritating. Now the only thing I've checked so far is on pin 8 of uh, the audio output tube. There is essentially no ripple. So I don't, don't think that's where it's coming from. I want to check that capacitor there. Although I did replace both those electrolytics, C13A and B. Otherwise, uh, I'm not sure. And there's not much to it. It's just all tucked down in here. Uh, it's this this tube. Uh, this is the first audio amp. That's a shielded tube. I guess I'll check to make sure that the the pin that goes to this external shield is grounded properly. And then here's the audio output tube. I can try swapping that out maybe. I'm still struggling with the buzz in the audio. I ended up replacing everything in the 6SQ7 audio amp and then the 6Y6 uh, audio output tube. These two guys, I've tried swapping out the tubes. Um, there's not a whole lot to it. Uh, I replaced all the caps, all the resistors, and then I even threw in an extra filter cap right on pin 4, which is the main B plus supply there. So then I said, well, I'll put my scope on there and start poking around. And I noticed something. When I connected my scope's 
probe's uh, ground lead to the chassis, the buzzing reduced considerably. So I'm going to take it off now. There's the buzz. Connect it. Considerably less. That reminds me of radios like this Filco 3930 where I would get buzzing on some portions of the band unless I grounded the chassis. So that got me thinking, well, where could that hum be coming coming through the system? And then I noticed that it's a 270k resistor coming right off the AC line going to the chassis. So I'll experiment with that. Um, that's uh, this guy right here. Perhaps that's letting some hum bleed into the whole system. I'm not quite sure why they would have a resistor like that. I've seen that on um, sets that didn't have a power transformer. Uh, usually there'd be a resistor and a capacitor going from like a floating chassis to one side of the AC line. Um, but uh, I'm not sure why it's there on this set. Well, disconnecting that resistor unfortunately made no difference whatsoever. So what I'm going to do for the time being is just call this down, put it in the cabinet, and when I get around to restoring one of my other 19A11 sets, I'll compare it to this one and maybe, maybe that buzz is just how they are. It's not that bad when you turn the sound off because it drowns out the buzzing. It's just a little bit irritating when there's really low, uh, you know, like when there's uh, no sound going on, like a quiet scene. Oh, well, that's, that's playing just fine. Alright, so now that the chassis is fully restored, what am I going to do with it? Well, I could put it back in the cabinet it came with, with the chunk missing out of the side, although I do have most of it, and I can glue it back in and just deal with the glue residue when there'll be a visible crack. And there's a crack extending almost up to the front. I could reinforce that. I could clean it up. I already cleaned up the top and it looks pretty nice. The front, not so much though. There are quite a few scratches along this edge that are still going to be pretty visible no matter what because they go into the big light somewhat deeply. Also, this face mask has got some pretty nasty gouges in it. I do have one or two others that might be a better condition I could swap out. So anyways, there's this cabinet. But what I think I'm going to do is put it into this cabinet. I did some videos on this a while ago. Um, I got this at an antique radio club of Illinois Swap Fest, um, I don't know, a year and a half, two and a half years ago, and I cleaned it up really good. The chassis that's currently in there is one that I got off of a Craigslist finding. I paid 20 bucks for the set. That had a huge gaping chunk missing out of the top. You can go back and find the video for it, I'm sure. Um, so in other words, pretty much all of my sets, it's a mismatch of cabinets and chassis and knobs. I just kind of put the nicest stuff I had at the time together. So... This is currently the best working chassis I've got and the nicest cabinet I've got, so why don't I put them all together and have at least one nice looking, fully functioning set. And as for this, I'll just add it to my pile of parts and uh, when I get around to doing another one of these, again, I'll cherry pick out the best parts I've got and make another presentable set. One last thing I want to take a look at before I button this set up is the tuner. If you recall, I was having trouble on channel 4 getting a good picture and sound. And when I put an alignment tool down in here to adjust the channel slug, it wasn't having much effect. Well, I popped out the front section of the tuner here for that channel and found that the tuning slug had fallen inside the tube. So here's a little brass slug with a slotted end for your alignment tool and it's threaded. This little piece of metal here, this piece of bent wire, rubs against the threads of that brass slug. Well that slug's only about half an inch long, so if you tighten it down too much, it goes past this piece of wire and just falls down inside the tube. 
conversely if you unscrew it too much it just falls out entirely well I found that slug down inside the tube for channel 4 tough to get out though I, could, I was trying to shake it quite a bit tap it down and I just couldn't get it it was stuck down in here so I carefully bent up the tube so I could get a piece of wire in there and poke it out which I was able to do and then I pushed this back down put it back in the tuner well here's channel 3 response curve is great looks just like it's supposed to, the markers are right on there's one for sound, one for video so right now I've got the one for video I believe, the higher frequency one at 65.75 markers right there if I dial this down to 61.25 other marker looking great, perfect put on channel 4, not so much now the only adjustments you can make are common for all the channels other than that one oscillator slug, so I'll try adjusting that, but I know just looking at the set and listening to the sound, I couldn't get it to look very good, so I expect by me doing this isn't going to do much. So what I'm thinking I'll do, well I've got that other chassis out, so I'm adjusting that slug right now. And see I can... alter it a bit but it's really just kind of it's just changing the frequency center frequency of the oscillator so it's just basically just just increasing and decreasing the amplitude it's not actually altering the shape of that curve so um, I'm gonna pop the channel 4 suction out of that other chassis and pop it into this guy and see if it makes a difference so there's a section I was just showing you, and that's for channel 13. Here's the one I just took out of the set, that's for channel 4. And I think when I bent this up and back down, I probably disturbed some of these windings a little bit. It doesn't take much to throw things off. And here's the one I just took out of another set. Alright, there's channel 3. There's channel 4. Only time to put this set back together, I'd say. Unfortunately, the set still has a little bit of a buzz, but I'm fresh out of ideas, so for the time being, calling this project done. I've installed the chassis in this black big white cabinet which has no damage and I think it's looking quite nice. It's playing right fairly here, well too. Wendell, sorry, I oh and as for that intermittent sorry, flicker, right. which still does happen occasionally, I know where that's coming from now. I was repositioning the CRT and I uh, took the base off to do so because the picture was a, yes. cocked a little bit and I discovered that a couple of the pins are loose this is one from salvage from a dead picture tube the uh, steel pin is actually broken loose from the bake light it's not that the wire connection is loose it's actually this pin that's loose so it's not making good contact between the, pl uh, the socket and, uh, and this pin now, if I was more ambitious right now, I could unsolder all the pins and remove the existing Bakelite base and transplant this one onto it, but it's not that bad of a problem. You're just giving this set a light tap, fixes it right up, so I'm just going to leave it alone for now. I'm really happy with the way the picture turned out. None As of for the buzz, is, well, just keep turning the volume up really loud. And see where they might be suspicious. quite so noticeable. <laughs> So as soon as I get around to restoring another one of these 7 inch Admiral sets, I can compare it to this one and maybe track down where the problem's coming from. Hey Captain, take a break, will you? Hi Ellie.